Welcome to Hustle and Flow with Heather Hubbard, episode 149. Hi, I'm Heather Hubbard, and I was a litigator, partner, and practice group leader at an AMLAW 200 firm. I know what it takes to rise to the top. I also know all too well the toll it can take on your personal life. So how do you shine bright without burning out? How do you embrace your ambition without selling your soul? You're listening to the Hustle and Flow podcast. Welcome back. I am your host, Heather Hubbard, and thank you so much for joining me this week and every week. If you are not yet a subscriber of the podcast, be sure to go to your favorite app and subscribe. I will then be delivered right into your podcast queue every single week so that you don't miss an episode. So today we're going to talk about intuition and possibly following signs. And I say possibly because there is a lot that I have to say on these topics. And so I'm not sure if this is going to end up being a two-parter or if we can get it all in one episode. If you've been listening for a while, you know that You know, sometimes I have loose outlines of this stuff, but it's not like I have it scripted and I've not timed it. I've not practiced it. It's as if we are just sitting here together. You know, we're having lunch, we're out for drinks, and we are just having a conversation. So because of that, I don't know where this is going. But at the end, I'll let you know whether we wrapped it up or if indeed we have a two-parter for this topic. So the reason I wanted to talk about this with you guys is it came up a lot when we were doing our opening retreat for the 2020 experience at Miraval. And back in the fall, late fall, I believe it was November, we did a survey to our newsletter list. And some of you may be on that. If not, you probably want to get on that. You can do that at heatherjoyhubbard.com. And so we sent out a survey and said, you know, if you complete this survey, we will give you a $5 Starbucks coupon and I will personally answer a request, right? Like whatever personalized recommendation you want from me, I will provide that. And holy cow, we were overwhelmed. So I am still working through those. If you submitted yours within the deadline and you have not yet received a response, that's why I am still working through all of those. And I do spend time looking at it and trying to give you a good answer. But it came up. I've been seeing this. It keeps coming up in that survey where people are asking questions about intuition. And possibly that's because you've listened to episode 111. That was also in the survey. What's your favorite episode? And a few of you listed that one. And in that one, I shared a little bit about my, you know, kooky woo side, where I talk about things like astrology (laughs) and intuition and manifestation, all of those things. And a lot of you, because you are business people, service professionals, we've got a lot of lawyers who listen, you tend to very much be in your head, right? Like you are in your brain. You are so intelligent and so logical, which is great. That serves you well. But sometimes you have a really hard time even wrapping your head around the concept of intuition, because again, you're still trying to use your head to understand it. And you're interested in it, but you don't really know what to do with it. And so because both of those combined, I thought, you know, we really should just do a podcast episode on this because I see people using it the right way and the wrong way. And not that there is a right or wrong way. That's a very lawyer like way of saying things, right? Like we think everything is black and white. It's not. But your intuition can really help you right? It can really help you and give you a ton of helpful information that's going to help you in your life and in your business. And this concept of being able to identify signs, follow signs, knowing when you're on the right path or the wrong path, being able to use that to your advantage. A lot of people use it as an excuse or they use it to actually fuel their fears or not take action. So I want to dig into this so that you know when it's intuition, when it's a sign, and when it's not. And these clearly are just my opinions, but I think you're going to find it super beneficial. So let's start with what is intuition? What is intuition? How do you know if it truly is 
your intuition. And intuition is often just a knowing. You might feel it in your gut, right? We often say your head versus your heart or your head versus your gut. If it's in your gut, if it's in your heart, that could be a sign that it's intuition, but it may not be. We'll get to that in a moment. But intuition, you generally cannot articulate why you feel or think the way you do. To me, that's actually the telltale sign of whether it's intuition or whether it's actually just fear or your head playing tricks on you. All right. Because if you can explain to me why you feel a certain way, if you can explain to me why you're, you know, having this intuitive, you know, experience or thought, it's probably not intuition because intuition is fuzzy and it doesn't always make sense. And I'm sure you've experienced this where you meet someone and you're like, oh, there is something about that person. I can't put my finger on it, but there is something about that person that I don't trust, right? That's your intuition. That's your intuition because you don't know why. You can't articulate why. Now, it could be that it's actually an unconscious bias, right? So we're going to put that to the side. But I guarantee you know what I'm talking about, where you've met someone, you can't put your finger on what it is about them, but there's something that's off. And then later, they do something crazy or off, right? And you're like, oh, I had a feeling. I had a sneaky suspicion that there was something wrong with that person. That is a perfect example of intuition. And I think it's often easier for us to feel comfortable with intuition when we have those spidey senses about other people or situations or circumstances. It's harder when it's about us. And part of the reason why is it's just we're too close to it. It's too personal to us and it allows our head to get in the way. But when you first meet someone or here's another great example, you walk into a room Or maybe you're walking into an alley or you're crossing a street or you're getting into an elevator and something makes the hair on your arms, right? Or the back of your neck stand up. There's some kind of intuition there that something's not right. And again, depending on the circumstances or the situation, it could be unconscious bias coming to play. But I'm sure you all have had a situation like that where you got some kind of signal that something was off, right? And so then you started paying attention or you just got out of there because you felt uncomfortable, even though you didn't know why. Those are two great examples of intuition. And I guarantee that every single person on this podcast has experienced that. I would be shocked if you have not. So that's what you're looking for in your own life as well to figure out, is this intuition and what is it telling me? I think I've shared on here before, there was a time, I believe it was in 2013 or 2014. So I left my firm to start my own company in October of 2014. So it was, I feel like it was, you know, maybe within that year or the year prior when I would wake up and as soon as I would get ready and get in my car, and start pulling out of the driveway, I had this knot in like my stomach and I thought I was going to get sick. It was like I just had this anxiety, but I had no idea what it was. No idea what it was, but it showed up often. And then it got to the point where it was almost every single day. And that was a huge red flag for me. It was a huge sign that something, right? Like my body was trying to tell me something, even though I didn't know what that something was. And so that's one thing you can look for is a feeling in your body. It's generally not a thought in your head. It often is a feeling in your body. It's part of why we say it's in your heart, right? Or it's in your gut. It could be this emotional feeling that's in your chest. It could be that tightness in your gut. It could be the hairs, you know, on your arms or the back of your neck standing up. But there's something going on in your body and your body's trying to tell you, hey, pay attention. Pay attention to this information that I am giving you. And if you are super logical, 
and you can rationalize everything and you're in your head all the time. What I have found is you aren't always aware of your body connection. So you might have these feelings and you're so used to being disconnected and dismissing them that you don't even recognize them as trying to give you information. This is why I highly recommend that those who are wanting to get started with meditation or mindfulness use a body scan technique because it really helps you, one, start this like mindful meditation, but two, it allows you to start to connect to your body. And I feel like I talked about that in an episode before, and I'm not sure which one it was, but if you're interested in going and finding that, I think it was either episode 10, 19, or 51, because those are the ones I think where I mostly talked about meditation and mindfulness. But so part of it is just starting to become aware of and paying attention to when your body sends you signals, because that very well may be a sign of intuition. And intuition can be just as or more powerful than the information that you are receiving and processing in your mind. Now, that said, sometimes when your body is giving you information and you have that knot in your stomach, right? Or you're having this emotional feeling, but you're not really sure what it is or what it means. It may not be intuition. It may be a sign that you're just experiencing fear or anxiety <laughs> because of something that you don't want to do, right? So maybe there is a fear of failure. Maybe there is a fear of success. Maybe there is a fear that something is going to be difficult or hard. Maybe there is a fear that you're going to have to give something up in order to get what you want. Maybe you have a fear of making the wrong decision, right? So any of those things can also show up in your gut or in your heart or in your body. So, and this is kind of goes to the second part, which we'll talk about either in a minute or on another episode, which is how to determine whether something is a sign or whether you're just using it as an excuse and a way to feel better. So how do you differentiate? How do you know, right? Is this intuition or is this just some kind of fear that is showing up for me. And the most important thing is to be able to create some space. And this totally goes back to the concept of mindfulness. I always, I think, had strong intuition when it came to people and places like I was talking about earlier. But when it came to intuition with myself, it wasn't always there. And it's partly because I had not yet learned or started practicing mindful techniques which means I was super reactive, right? So I would get this information, whether it was in my body or in my head, and I would immediately react. I wasn't able to create space between having the thought, having the feeling, having the experience and reacting, right? So I literally was creating a story in an instant and then immediately reacting or acting upon that. There was no space in between. And so it's really important that you learn to create that space and that you look at it from a neutral outsider perspective. So the entire concept of mindfulness is that you're able to view things non judgmentally and you're able to view them from this like third party perspective. So if you kind of imagine that like you're floating above and you're watching your thoughts and you're watching your feelings and you're watching your emotions and you're watching your body, as opposed to you are your thought, you are your emotion, you are your body. It's allowing you to watch it from a different perspective and to be neutral about it, not have predetermined notions as to what those things mean. You guys, great news. The 2020 planners, Project Pad and Bookmarks are finally here. More than a typical planner, it is a complete planning system that will revolutionize the way you approach your days, weeks, months, and years. It will help you achieve your biggest goals and work on that to-do list so that you can take back your day and focus on what matters most. Get yours now at lifeinlawplanner.com.
So for example, when I started to experience that knot in my stomach in the morning as I was headed to work, I was able to create space around it and not judge it. And so it was just being curious of, hmm, this is new. I've not really experienced this before. I wonder what it is. I wonder what this is, as opposed to jumping to conclusions. And so the first thing that you can do is you can look at it from a logical, rational perspective. Like, what could possibly be causing this? And some of my thoughts were, you know, am I sick? Another was, am I pregnant? Like, I'm not trying to get pregnant. Is this morning sickness? Like, what is this? And so you can just use the logical mind to begin with of like, what is it? And then it's like, well, maybe it's worry or maybe it's anxiety. And then it's like, well, what do I have to be worried about? What do I have to be anxious about? And so you're just curious and you're not, you know, it's not like I have to have the answer today. It's just you're open to being present and maybe finding an answer, right? It really is non judgmental. And that often is the hardest part for us because we want an answer and we want to fix it. And so just being open to hmm, something's going on and I don't know what it is. So I didn't feel like I had anything that I was really anxious or afraid of, but clearly this was happening only in the mornings and it was only when I went to work, right? So if it was a weekend or something else, like it wasn't happening. If I was in the car headed somewhere else or coming home, like it wasn't happening, I was able to eventually realize, okay, this is only happening when I'm headed to work. And so then it's, well, what do I have to be anxious about? Or what do I have to be afraid of? And obviously, you know, when you work all the time and you have a stressful job, certainly there are things that can come into play, but there wasn't really anything that had changed. And even when I was at work, I was trying to pay attention. Is there certain things that are bothering me more than others? And there wasn't, right? So now this is a bit of deductive reasoning, but you start to realize, okay, my body's trying to tell me something and there's not a clear logical answer. And that's often great sign that it is intuition. And if there is a fear there, like you can't even really figure out what it is. And from there, it's like, okay, well, if there's something about going to work that's upsetting me, I'm just going to continue to pay attention to that. And that is what I started to follow that led me to do other things to figure out what the issue was, which led to me realizing I wanted to do something else. My purpose was somewhere else. A more recent example that I can give to you is growing my business. I don't know if you, you know, how long you've been listening or if you recall, but last spring I was really just feeling kind of down and out and anxious and irritable and couldn't figure out why, right? So it goes back to that like I'm feeling this stuff in my body, what the heck is going on? And I paid enough attention and realized not that I was out of alignment necessarily, but that the business was not, you know, filling my soul the way it once had. And something was off about it. And that's when I then like I took a sabbatical on the podcast. I stopped my short term masterminds. Like I literally like was like, okay, we're putting everything on pause and we're going to figure out what this is. Because my body is telling me something is off and we have to figure out what it is. We're not going to just keep moving forward. And, you know, my team, it was driving them a bit crazy because, you know, to make money, <laughs> to pay bills, you have to be putting services and products out there. And I was like, we're not doing it until I feel confident. Like until this feels right, we are not doing it. And it really was trusting my intuition on that. And even with the 2020 experience, right? Like I love masterminds. I love serving. I love retreats. And I just kept putting models together and putting them out there either to the team or to my coaches or others and letting them look at it. And people, you know, kept saying, that's not right. You can't do that. You can't pull it off in that way. And, you know, I'm really stubborn, and one of the best ways to ever get me to take any action is to tell me that I cannot do something <laughs> or that something is not possible because I'm like, OK, hold my wine and then let me go show you. So I have to always check in and make sure I'm not just trying to, you know, prove someone wrong as opposed to doing really what feels right or what I want. But intuitively, I knew that what I was hearing did not make sense just because someone else could not see it, just because someone else did not understand it, just because someone else saw all these obstacles, did not mean that that was going to be my reality. And that's where I just kept trusting 
how I felt about the concepts that I was coming up with. And I felt really good about the 2020 experience, but it looked very different when I first put it together. And there was a part of that. I was like, this is mostly right, but there is a part of this that feels off and I can't explain it. Like, I can't explain it. Like, we're not there yet, and I don't know what it is. But as opposed to trying to force the answer, as opposed to trying to get it perfect, because I was not trying to do that, I was trying to get it to feel right, because I very much trust my intuition. And so I was trying to get to the point where my body was saying, yes, every emotion in my body, right? Like, everything is just, yes, this is it. And I got there. I got to that place. And when I got to that place, at that point, it didn't matter what anyone had to say, regardless of how much I was paying someone to give me their opinion. That's when I intuitively knew this is it. And I will tell you, I had a vision for what it was going to be. But when we kicked it off at Miraval, it blew my mind. It was better than what I had envisioned. And I already now see what is possible. And the interesting thing is, you know, I had the intuitive hit. And then my mind started to create it. But my intuition knew more than my head, because it knew what I was creating beyond what I saw in my head. I don't know if that's getting a little weird for you. But my body, my intuition knew, right. And when I kept trusting that, That's what allowed us to really create this beautiful, beautiful thing that has exceeded my expectations and quite frankly, has exceeded the participants and the facilitators. Like everybody is just so dang excited about what we have created. And most everyone said it was not possible. And it was right. So that was following the intuition. And like I I think I shared on 111, I am into some fun woo stuff, including astrology. I love astrology. And so I check with my astrologist every year and just had a meeting with her this past week, looking at our entire layout for the company, for the business, what we're doing for the year. And so she asked me, she was like, is everything still set in stone? Because I'd submitted it. And she laughed. She was like, when you give me plans, like they're so detailed. <laughs> She's like, no one else submits me these kinds of like business plans. But so I, you know, I said, well, here's the thing. Clearly, we have flexibility. I like structure. I like plans, but I believe in flexibility. I said, but there's something off with this one thing we're going to offer. And so if you were at the live event for the All Rise Breakfast, I shared with you what that was. No one else knows what that is. So if you were there, you know what I'm talking about. The rest of you, you'll just have to guess. But I told her on that, I said, something's off with this. And I don't know what it is, but let's discuss. And she asked me, she was like, well, what's off with it, right? And this was a two-parter. And this is going to give you a ton of information on how you can start using this in your own life, in your own business. And I said, one, it's just my intuition. It's just my body. It is just my gut. Something is off. And I have no idea idea what it is. No idea. I'll eventually, if I stay open enough and curious enough, figure it out. Right. But I don't have to figure it out today. But there's something off intuitively. Number two, because I am an intellect and I am rational and I use logic. I said, number two, here's what it possibly could be. Right. This is where you go to that. Like, well, what could it be? And so then I explained to her I was able to articulate what my resistance might be. And here's the crazy thing. It's not like I had shared that aloud with anyone else or I had journaled about it. But in that moment, I was able to articulate all of the logical and rational reasons why it might be fear or why I might be resisting it. And holy crap, it was super helpful information to know, right? So I now can take that information because I was willing to be neutral and because I was willing to say, well, if it's intuition, I don't know what it is. And if it's fear, if it's anxiety, if it's, you know, something like that, I should be able to have a logical explanation. So just going through some examples, like, I don't know what it is, but it could be this. That in and of itself completely showed me, right? Like it revealed some fears 
and concerns I was having that I didn't even know. And that, by the way, is not intuition. That's not intuition. So intuition is providing you some kind of insight. And if it's in your body and it's fear, it's not necessarily insight to take action, but being able to be neutral enough and create that space and ask yourself the questions of if this is insight, what could it be? And if this is fear, what could it be? You're going to get information, one, for your head to indeed process, and two, for your body to continue to stay open. So that was super helpful for me in being able to articulate and identify and come back to the team to say, okay, here are some concerns. Let's work through them. And there's still something intuitively off. And we're not proceeding until we, you know, get that aligned. So you can use that in your own life and your own business. So you just want to start paying attention to your body, pay attention to those emotions, pay attention to your gut, anything that's showing up, and then create space, be neutral, be curious, all right, as opposed to just reacting or trying to figure out what does this mean right now, or I have to have an answer right now, try to create as much space as possible, and then get clear on can I articulate what this is? And if I can, that's probably fear. And it doesn't have to be right or wrong, but just try it out. See if you can't articulate what it would be. And if you struggle with articulating it at all, then again, that is some type of intuition. And it will eventually reveal itself if you continue to stay open to it. Okay, wow. Yeah, so I'm looking at the time. And indeed, this is going to be a two-parter. All right, so here's what we're going to do then. I'll go ahead and give you a heads up of what's coming. Next week, we have a special guest, Kathy Klotz guest. She is a pioneer and a titan. She was like, you know, one of those women, a few women back in the day. She did marketing for tech in Silicon Valley, and she now helps leaders with marketing and sales and helping teams. So she's going to be on here next week. You're going to love that episode. And so what we'll do then is episode 151, which is going to come out in two weeks. That'll be on February 11th. We will finish this episode. So we'll make it two parts and we'll talk then about signs and the concept of, you know, whether something is a sign you're doing the right thing or the wrong thing or whether or not it's just a cop out and an excuse. (laughs) So good. This is fun. I hope you guys are enjoying this. I know it's a little bit different than what I normally do, but, you know, I think it's super helpful and it's definitely something that I use when I am doing my strategy and when I'm executing and when I'm pivoting. So I encourage you to tap into that part of yourself as well. And as a heads up, you know, we were talking about the 2020 experience because I batched these. I don't know that we've announced this yet. When we were at Miraval, we were going to start a fourth pod and do it virtually, but we were like, no, people have to experience this because a lot of the women who were there, you know, they even said like, I'm normally not open to some of the stuff that we did. And not only did it feel completely wonderful, but it gave them amazing breakthroughs, right? And so they were like, I'm now open to like so many different ways of exploring things. And like, it really does give them that transformational experience. And I know that sounds probably a little cryptic, but that's what my retreats are about. And some of what I do best, it's really cracking you open to stuff that you didn't even know was there. Things that are holding you back and blocking you that like you just didn't even see coming. So we definitely want to start that fourth group at Miraval so that everyone in the larger group has that similar experience. And we are going to be kicking that off April 19th through the 22nd. So if you are interested in participating this year, we'll be kicking off at Miraval in Tucson, then go ahead and get your application in. It's 2020mastermindexperience.com. And if you're interested in 2021, We are already planning all that. We are already booking all of that because this is so amazing. Like we know without a doubt, our intuition is 100% telling us just keep going with this right now because it is so amazing and so fulfilling. We are going ahead and taking deposits on that now. So if you get the interview and we invite you in, you pay a deposit now and then your payment election, which means your payment plan that you're choosing, that's not due until August. So, but the, here's the benefit of getting that locked in. One, you get your spot, but two, you get to lock in 2020 pricing. So we're limiting how many we're allowing in at that 2020 pricing. 
And we're only doing that in the first quarter. So if you think that that's something you want to do, but you're not ready to do it until next year, you can go ahead and lock in your spot with a pretty low deposit now. So you can go and again, like you're going to look at the 2020experience.com website, it's going to have all of this year's information, but still go ahead and fill out that application. And in it, you can note that you're interested in 2021 or the fourth pod, and we'll get you scheduled for an interview. And I'm the one doing those interviews. So we'll jump on the phone and chat. All right, that's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed it. Have a great week and I will see you soon. For show notes, downloads, and other free resources, and to keep the conversation going, head on over to hustleandflowpodcast.com. See you there.